Hey there, I'm Robbie Carman. And my name's Rich Harrington. And we're going to take a look at a media approach for managing media called a common media folder. That's right, Rich. And this is something that you and I have sort of been using over the years. We've talked about it in other books that we've written together. And so you might have seen this approach before. But we're big fans of this approach simply because it's one way to sort of get organized and protect yourself from doing things like duplicating media, uh, having project files that are hard to find, and things like that. Where this approach really came from was first when we began to work on the Video Made in a Mac book, which focused on the fact of tying Final Cut Studio with Adobe Creative Suite. And then I started rolling this into actual use in my own production company, and what I found was we were always jumping between one app and another, and we had lots of different project files, mm -hmm. different assets, and when one person worked on it and switched to another person or he came back six months later, you could never find anything. So you're going to have to customize this for your individual workflow, but use this as a guideline saying, if it's organized on the hard drive, it's organized in my project. And I think that's a good point, Rich. This is a starting point. By no means are we saying you have to use it in this exact way. Um, the point of it is that it's customizable and you can create folders and subfolders uh, how you want and how you wish. But with that said, why don't we go through the folders that we have here. And by the way, we've included this on the DVD with the book. Um, we can go through and show people sort of how we like to organize things. Um, so starting at the top, we have an original footage folder. And you can see inside of here, I have some stuff that I've copied from field storage. Right here, I have a DMG, a disk image that I made uh, from a red camera. And then these are uh, files that I unpacked from that camera. And if you're on a PC, you might make an ISO to make a disk image for an individual card or used a verified copying utility like Adobe Prelude or something else. Mm -hmm. This is the original transfer from the camera. And so depending upon what you shoot, this folder might look a little bit different, but I'll typically have a card folder or a per day folder with multiple cards tucked within that. Right, and in this, in this case, we actually have .movs. These are move files from a red, uh, raw, red, uh, red raw files. So these were also some transcodes, but the point is it was what was uh, originally taken from the field. Yep, and then many of the apps are gonna start to generate some preview files. Premiere does this in particular when you have long op type media or non-optimized media. It's gonna make some cache files, some peak files, or if you're rendering effects, making sure you target this will allow you to keep those in one central location. And the danger here is that by default, Premiere tends to want to use the system folder mm. for the individual That's user. Right. And if you're in a multi-user environment, you're like, well, why am I opening up my project? Does it have to reconform everything? Or, or why am I getting all these files on my system? That's right. And you could also do things like if you're capturing from tape, you could choose your tape location to capture to this location as well. Yeah. A big thing here is project files. Yeah. And Remember, Adobe Premiere Pro and everything else within the Creative Suite, there is no master media manager. So if you start dropping in After Effects projects and using Dynamic Link or Photoshop files, you're still going to want to keep those organized. So you could start to put content in there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll find, if I do start getting into versioning, is I'll make a old or a backup folder and then just have the current ones open at the top level so I can go back to older versions if needed. Just be careful you don't name anything final. Yes. Because that's if you name, once you name something final, it's, it's all over with. You're just, yeah, that's just taunting the fates there. And like, more final. Exactly. Final finalist. So final that if it's not done, I'm going to quit my job final. So the next two folders are for graphics. And you do a lot of graphics work, obviously, Rich. And we sort of divided this out into two things. Graphic sources could be anything that you're going to use in a motion graphics project, so an After Effects project. These could be things like particle systems you might have generated in the past. Or EPS stills, files, vector e files, yeah. Ex exactly. And these are just sort of your source media. And I usually on a complex project, again, add subfolders within. This is just a general system. But then I keep track of things I've exported. So right. renders, flattened files, files with alpha channels, things that are ready to bring into the NLE. And one of the things I'm a big fan of is if I know it's wrong, like if there was a spelling mistake or there's something else, I just erase the old file and by saving over it the newer version with mm -hmm. the exact same name. And the cool thing is, is that from Premiere Pro's standpoint, it's just going to say, oh, I need open bumper number one. And if you blew away the old one and put the new one right on top of it, Premiere's going to go, there it is. Yeah, it just reconnects to it automatically. 
Other things include your audio sources. You can make subfolders here, but this is basically sources, VO, music. Exactly, and you, you make a good point. I might organize this into things like sound effects and different libraries of sound effects and so on and so forth. And I tend to keep my stock footage separate, particularly because it often involves licensing or has restrictions. Mm -hmm. And then exports. This is where we'll start to have all the different things that spit out. In fact, one of the things I like to do is at the end of the project, and we talk more about this later on in future movies, I'll use Adobe Media Encoder to put out a whole bunch of mezzanine files and common compressions. So when the client calls up and says, oh my gosh, I'm at a trade show, <laughs> right. I need the MP4. Or, oh, I'm going on in half an hour to give a presentation. And you look like a hero because you go, hey, I already got that ready to go. Yeah, although sometimes I'll be honest, I will wait a half hour before I send it or an hour before <laughs> I send it. make it look like you did some work, right? Exactly. Right, we got a bill. Right. So, now, all the other files, so all the folders that we've talked about so far have had to do with actual production files, but we also tend to save production paperwork, right? Yeah. Things like scripts, uh, checklists, um, you know, even like financial paperwork and like bids and that kind of stuff all in this folder as well because after all, if you're sitting there and client goes, well, how many hours have I used so far? You go, oh, let me just pull up, you know, the bid real quick or, you know, my, my hours uh, sheet and you can tell them. And the best thing about this is when it comes time to back up the project or to archive the project. All in one place. It's all in one place. And so this really cuts down issues. It reduces the amount of duplicated media and it gets around some of the facts that you might be using three, four, even six apps in an Adobe Creative Workflow. By using one common media folder, you're not going to drive yourself nuts hunting and pecking or knocking things offline. That's right. And we've included this on the disk, obviously without the media. So feel free to put this into play in your own workflows and customize it as needed.